All right, we have to be quiet while we're doing this because I'm in a study hall, okay? So keep this on the DL. But we're going to talk about Newton's first law of motion, all right? Also referred to as the law of inertia. So Newton's first law of motion states, let me write this out, first law of motion. This is the one you probably heard of where it says an object in motion stays in motion, blah, blah, blah. I have a slightly different definition. So I say an object in motion will maintain a in that state of motion unless acted upon by an outside unbalanced force. All right. Now you'll notice I didn't say object at rest will stay at rest. Object motion will stay in motion because rest is just a constant velocity of zero. So it is already in motion, just it happens to be a special case of motion that is zero that people often freak out about. So no real reason to put that. So this is all linked with analyzing forces. So let's say we have an object and it's just cruising along, like we've got a baseball flying through the air. If we were to look at the forces on this, there is no force that makes it go forward. It will always go forward because it's in motion. So it's going to stay in motion. There is no reason to have it keep going in motion with an external force. Objects in motion to stay in motion. We often have a hard time thinking of this because instead of balls flying through the air, we often think of things sliding across a table. And if something slides across the table or the floor, then we often have friction acting against us. So then we need some sort of force to continually move it forward. Even with your car, things like that, you have to keep pushing it forward because usually there is a frictional force to work against our motion. So that's why in our brains, we have a hard time just realizing an object's gonna just keep doing what's doing for all eternity. All right, so for example, if you take the Voyager space probe, it's in our space. There is no friction to slow it down. Even though it has no engines left, it has no propulsion, all that stuff, it's going to stay in motion for all of eternity. It's just going to keep going straight in a straight line. And that's the second part of this. So this state of motion, let me do a sort of color change here. Red, yay. All right, this state of motion, this is a straight line path. All right, all objects will naturally go in a straight line path at constant velocity. So if you ever see an object curve, so again, we'll go back to our baseball. Let's make our baseball now look like a baseball. Yay. So the only way to get a baseball to actually curve, and I'm not talking about falling down, but like that curve ball where you're like, yeah, the baseball actually did a weird shape like that, is because of the friction acting against it. So the friction is constantly pushing against the seams on the baseball. You end up getting pressure zones that are high pressure, low pressure on different sides, cause it to curve. Same thing. When your car, here, I'm going to draw a picture of a car. Hey, yeah, look at that car. It's from the, the back side. All right, so it's a car. I don't know. It's the worst car I've ever drawn in my life. Oh, well. It's, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Car goes makes a turn, okay? So it's going into the page. All right. And then it's going to make a turn around the corner. It would go straight if there was no friction. That's why if your car, and you're making it turn on ice, your car will go in a straight line instead of turning. So to turn, you need that force of friction between the wheels and the asphalt, the road. Whereas if that force is gone, then you're going to go in a straight line. And that's why ice is so dangerous, because you lose that ability to apply the outside unbalanced force. And so you're just going to go in a pretty straight line at constant velocity. All right, so that's Newton's first law of motion, not so. See how it applies to various situations. And uh, good luck. Enjoy science.